Welcome back to the Engineering Workshop. I'm Hunter White. In this episode, we're going to use the engineering design process to make this CNC enclosure for the Sapoco Pro. Thanks for watching. My problem statement is design and build a mobile workbench with enclosure for a benchtop CNC. My CNC is the Sapoco Pro XXL. I also need it to fit the 150 woodworker and the X-Carve 1000mm. While doing background research, I found a video by Eigen Designs where he had a sliding enclosure for his Onefinity. What I really liked was how the enclosure slid out of the way in the large side windows. And I also found a very similar design for Mitz's woodworking, which also had a sliding enclosure front. My specific requirements for my CNC enclosure include benchtop dimensions of 56 inches by 53 inches, integrated storage for all my accessories, integrated dust collection, integrated power with an emergency stop switch and individual switches for the components that make up the CNC, LED lighting for inside the enclosure, the entire thing needs to be on casters so it can move around the shop, remote monitoring, and fire suppression capabilities. While we get this build montage rolling, I want to take a second to thank Black Rifle Coffee. I just came back from a deployment to Afghanistan with the Special Forces Detachment and my senior 18 Echo reached out to Black Rifle and asked if they'd be willing to sponsor all detachment while we were on deployment. Um, they graciously said yes and they sent us a shit ton of coffee and we are so incredibly grateful. Um, it lasted us the entire deployment. It was freaking delicious. Those long hours in the talk while we were out on mission um, we brought that with us everywhere. So we shot this for you. I hope you enjoy um, And I want to say every to everybody that's watching this. It's an awesome freaking company. They support veterans They support special operations and they do it uh, all the time while we're in theater. So um, Thank you black rifle and uh, look forward to working with you guys in the future So have you seen so far? I've been milling all the 2x4 lumber that I'm going to use for the frame. So I start by putting everything through the planer, and as 2x4s come at about an inch and a half thick, this usually brings them down to 1.47, 1.45 inches thick. I then run them through the table saw and get everything 3 inches wide, so I usually get 1.5 by 3 inch wide 2x4s, and then I mill half lap joinery on the table saw using that sled. This makes all the joinery very square and easy to assemble. Um, take a little bit of time on some test cuts to get it right, but then when I go ahead and put the frame pieces together, as you can see here, it goes together square. I check with a carpenter square, but it's never really ever been an issue. So moving on to add the frame, I use pocket hole joineries to assemble those two frame sides together. And my awesome neighbor saw me struggling and came over to help me. Um, doing working by yourself can be challenging sometimes. Uh, extra set of hands is really helpful. So, also want to point out that I've got pocket holes in the top of those frame cross members. Those are going to be used to uh, um, secure the plywood top, so I don't have to drill holes all the way through the through the plywood from the top surface. So it's going to be a clean top surface. In this scene, you see me attaching what I call caster blocks. It's just a place to install the casters, like you see here. Here I'm setting my half inch rabbiting bit to the thickness of the plywood that I'm going to use for the sides and then I'll cut a half inch um, wide quarter inch deep rabbit into the sides of the frame. That will allow me to flush out all the plywood. As you can see here, square up the corners with a chisel, add a little bit of glue to the sides and then drop the plywood in and some nails to hold it in place while the glue dries. Alright, so if you're following along with the build plans, at this point you would notice that the plans specify that this is supposed to be one piece and I've got two pieces and the reason is that I cut this to meet this dimension and then got confused on the table saw and ended up cutting it in half when I shouldn't have and then I did my best to just split the difference and now I have two pieces and so then when I went to cut the second piece I freaking did it again and I cut this piece wrong for a second time. So I've now turned like two good usable scrap pieces into like three or four little tiny scrap pieces so that's mildly frustrating but anyway I'm screwing this on the back and it's not using glue so that if I ever have to get access to the back of the CNC everything's gonna be fine. I can take this off real easy and now even easier because it's in two separate pieces. But live and learn. Always make mistakes.
And here I'm just putting in the bottom plywood pieces. I just used a jigsaw to cut the little corners out so they fit around the flame frame so it's super clean inside. Um, I did end up screwing those down with screws just to hold them in place. And then adding the cabinet divider. This will separate the two sides of the drawers, pocket holes on the bottom with screws, and then I use screws from the top of the frame, as you'll see here in a second, to secure that thing into the top so it doesn't move on you. And the next step is to add the top plywood. This is three quarter inch oak plywood cut in two different pieces because the bench top dimensions are larger than a sheet of plywood. So just glue and then pocket holes from underneath and those pre-planned holes and some counterweight on top, which you might've saw was delivered earlier. I then use a flush trim bit and a router to make uh, sure that the bench top plywood is perfectly flush with the frame. Here you see me screwing in the control panel. I am not using glue because I want to take this out eventually if I ever need to repair the switches. Um, and also I intend to use a CNC to cut the switch holes out. You'll see that later. To finish out the cabinet, I need to install the drawers. So these are drawer slide spacers so that the drawer slides are flush with the frame. Just makes it easier. I pre-marked where all the drawer slide spacers need to go. So lining up is pretty easy, just pencil marks on each side. I use glue and screws to hold them into place um, while the glue dries. So if you're following along in the plans, you would notice that this cabinet divider is not supposed to have spacers for the drawer slides. So what I found was that when I went to the Home Depot and bought half inch plywood, I actually wasn't paying close enough attention. And this is actually metric, it's not half inch, so it was a little short. Also, I modeled the cabinet divider as three quarters of an inch and annotated it as half inch. So between those two errors I came up with a little space. Um, if you're following along and you find this error, uh, you can just add, these are a quarter inch pieces of scrap plywood that I had lying around and I was able to put those in there and make everything fit. So uh, much simpler than if the drawers would have been too wide, that would have been a nightmare. Um, anyway, the correction is made in the plans uh, in an updated version. So um, if you do want an updated version, you can always hit me up on Etsy and I'll give you that. Um, absolutely no charge, but anyway, just wanted to share that. Here I'm using a pretty standard method to uh, apply drawer fronts. I've got some pre-drilled holes that you can see in the front there. I'm just going to use some spacers to attach the drawer front, which is a three-quarter inch oak plywood to match. Send some screws in through where the drawer pool is going to be, and then use those four holes in that you saw pre-drilled um, to screw screws in from the back side. I can then take those two center screws out and add the drawer pull. Pretty easy, pretty simple, works pretty well. And finally adding some trim to the front left and the right. This is three quarter inch oak board. He's just using some glue and clamps to hold it in place while the glue dries. This will cover up the plywood edge on the top and kind of clean everything up. And then come back with a quarter inch round over just to make it nice to the touch. And finally, everyone's favorite, some sanding. Because I wasn't really pleased with the way the plywood sides came out, I decided to paint them white. Um, I'm, I'm gonna use a regular shellac finish on the rest of the oak that I paid so much money for. Um, but I actually feel like the white gave it a nice touch and it's just kind of different, helps uh, reflect some of the light in the shop. And here I am applying my favorite shop furniture finish, shellac in clear, which is also used on that miter saw station you can see behind me. It just comes out beautiful. It's so easy to repair, so easy to apply. Um, very, very pleased with how the finish on this CNC enclosure came out. All right, now that we got the bench cabinet assembled, not quite complete, but enough to get the CNC on it, it's time to get the Shapoko from these boxes onto this cabinet. And here it is. Looks really great. Uh, it assembled really easily. Uh, the boxes came with like great instructions, not only online through the instruction manual, but also like how each box was uh, labeled and everything. So uh, big thanks for that. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. Um, I'm still working through some troubleshooting uh, with the carbide folks. They've been super helpful, but uh, it's been incredibly frustrating. So. Um, I'm going to do something that I know how to do, and I'm going to build the rest of this enclosure to make myself feel better about the fact that I can't make this work. All right, let's get going. 
I do want to thank Fleming at Carbide 3D for all his support through that process. He was able to get me squared away, taught me what was wrong, and uh, sent me the repair wiring that I needed to make it all work. So here I'm building a back door to the CNC enclosure. I didn't originally design this. Uh, I thought it would just be best if it was just a piece of plywood because I didn't ever think I would need to extend a, a workpiece out the back. But after all the troubleshooting, I decided I really did need access to the back for maintenance, troubleshooting, etc. So I built a frame, kind of like any cabinet door, put a half inch rabbit around the frame as well as the inner plywood so that they mate and form a, a seal, so to speak. Then some piano hinges at the bottom back door works really well. And what I w was intending to use the CNC to cut the enclosure sides, um, which would be perfect for the windows, I just ended up doing it on the table saw. So if you aren't don't have your CNC up and running at this time, uh, it's very easy. Using a dado stack, I cut dados for the drawer slides, and then a jigsaw, as you see here, I can cut out the windows. Um, just using an interesting window design, uh, kind of change it up from what I've seen in the background research. Um, and this is kind of give it my own touch. An assembly with the back door is just the same as it would have been otherwise. I use pocket screws around that back piece, glue, and then clamps hold everything together and then come back in with the pocket screws around all the sides. Um, I built the sliding front on the back just to kind of use it as a brace. I originally tried to use T-Track hardware to hold the front door into the T-Track for the sliding door assembly. Um, but that really didn't work. It just ended up binding up all the time. There just seemed to be too much friction and it really wasn't smooth enough to work. So I ended up replacing it with just some uh, quarter inch or three eighths inch uh, wood dowel that I had on hand for a scrap. Um, that worked really well. And so it doesn't bind. It doesn't have the same like holding power, but the door doesn't actually try to come out of the enclosure um, to the left or right. Um, it just, it, all it needs to do is slide along those tracks in the top. So the wood was much better at that than any kind of metal hardware. Super easy to find and resource, and that's what I recommend. So here we're just installing the polycarbonate windows. Uh, pretty easy, pre-drilled and countersunk um, some screw holes, and then just went all the way around and screwed them in. I did not use glue in case I ever had to uh, take them out. Uh, and here I am drilling the hole for the dust collection hosing to come up, as well as a little relief for all the hoses or uh, power cables and stuff like that. They're gonna have to go from the bench top down underneath. And to secure that dust collection hosing, I'm just using some eye hooks and some little tiny uh, bungee cords that I found at a uh, home goods store. And thanks to Fleming and all his help, I was able to get the CNC up and running in time to cut the holes for the switches. So this is actually my second project on the CNC and it was really fun getting to use Fusion and kind of write G-code and figure out how I wanted to do it. Um, actually in college I did work as a machinist for a while, so uh, to be fair I kind of had a head start on this. Um, spending a couple years working in a uh, industrial CNC machine, machine shop will really help with that. Um, but really excited to have this capability in my own house. And here I'm installing the switch. I cut a little relief uh, for that emergency stop switch. It goes in on that left side and then the others. I cut those just a little bit too tight so I ended up having to use a chisel to uh, kind of cut some relief in those corners so I could kind of press fit them into place if you do do this. Give yourself a little more room. All right. This is a big moment of truth right here. I am not very confident at all in electrical. And I wired the four plugs up. This is auxiliary, which will take the vacuum. This will be the CNC, this will be the router, and this will be the LEDs. And I've added loops that I've labeled to add an e-stop, a switch for the CNC up front, switch for the router up front, and a switch for the LEDs up front. I am going to plug this main power cable, which will power everything else, into this for the first time. Let's see if it catches on fire. Okay, this is good. I didn't flip a breaker. <laughs> the lights are still on in the garage, and I don't see any smoke. That is surprising. Okay, now I've got this little plug tester. I am going to test each one of these plugs because I have not wired a switch into each one of these. They should all be hot. So if I get two amber lights, it's good. So this one is good. This one is good. This is incredible. 
This one is good. Oh my goodness. And the last one is good. Oh my god, I am honestly shocked that that worked for the first time. I really hope this doesn't catch on fire and burn the house down in the middle of the night. And after my great electrical victory, I can seal up the back. Again, no glue. Super easy to take these two panels off, so it was kind of a fortuitous mistake. I'm using a Philips Hue smart switch uh, so I can remotely kill power to the entire CNC enclosure. And here I am adding my fire suppression technique. So this is just a regular fire extinguisher. This is going to be my P and my pace plan, primary. And this will be the Nest smoke alarm. So this should hopefully detect a fire if anything is going on. And the reason I went with the Google Nest one is because it will send an alert to my phone. And my final last ditch effort for fire suppression is one of these uh, AFO fire suppression balls. So kind of the thought is that if a flame can burn through and rupture the outer surface, the ball will explode. And inside an enclosure like mine, it should uh, completely put out any fire before the house burns down. So at this point, you might be wondering, why do we have so many fire protection measures? And the answer is because I did the electrical. And the final touch is to install a Google Nest camera for remote monitoring. This will allow me to uh, step inside for a little bit if I need to. that build video thanks for watching um, if you want to build the CNC enclosure for yourself I do have build plans available on my Etsy store if you have any questions on the build you can always shoot me a message on Etsy I'm really quick to get back to you on everything if the video didn't answer it for you or you can drop it in the uh, comments on the YouTube video and I'll answer it there as well um, I will have some links to some of the products I use not affiliated with any of them these are just the things that I use, like Google specifically. I just have that stuff in my house, so it was easy to integrate um, for what I already have for my smart home stuff. Uh, but going forward with the channel, I'm super excited. There'll be a lot more CNC content um, in, in the channel and as I get to build more shop projects. Um, but also, I'm going to add a 3D printer right over there. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to start prototyping robotics. I specifically bought this CNC machine because I want to be able to cut aluminum um, precisely, and then I'm going to use a 3D printer, so the combination of being able to mill aluminum and 3D print will allow me to prototype robotics in preparation for a graduate program, uh, hopefully doing robotics engineering. So more of that to follow um, as I continue down this journey of uh, teaching myself stuff, and with this big win of electronics, I might not be hopeless. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.